Hello everyone and welcome to the Amber Army YouTube channel's newest gaming series. This is the Championship Manager 3 Amber Army Aston Villa series. So, as you can see, we are Amber Army, we are appointed as Aston Villa Manager, but who remembers the game? The game Championship Manager 3 was the first instalment of the, the, the CM3 series, which included everyone's favourite uh, Championship Manager 2001-2002. Um, this was released in the middle of the 1998-99 season, following on from the popular CM 97-98, the final instalment of the uh, everyone's personal favourite, the CM2 series. I'm not going to talk gaming history now. Um, we're going to talk Aston Villa. And we're going to talk the Premier League back then. Obviously, if you can see the Aston Villa team, some very old names there. Obviously, along the lines of Matt Bosnich, Gareth Southgate, Ricky Schimacher, Steve Watson, <laughs> Gareth Barry. When it, you know when he first started his career, Ugo Egiog, the late great Ugo Egiog. We get to see him back in his playing days. Um, Lee Hendry, Paul Merson, towards the end of his career. So yeah, we're not, we're starting off with a pretty decent Villa team now. Villa back then were known as something of a force in English football, and. Unfortunately, in real life now, they've fallen off the boil and fallen into the championship. But in this series, we're going to aim to take Villa to not just being a force in English football, but to being a major player, um, the force of English football, the new Manchester United, so to say. It may take a few seasons, but thankfully you guys will be with me every step of the way as we take Aston Villa to the top. So, the first thing I'm going to do... Obviously, if those of you who remember this game well enough will know that there are some players out there who you basically sign first thing because they're the better players on the game or they turn into the very better players of the game. Um, I'm not going to take you through the ins and outs of everything that I do. I'm just going to give you updates and allow you guys to see the games, that sort of stuff, basically. So, without further ado, I'm going to go and look for some players and I'll update you ever so shortly. Okay then guys, so as you can see, I've organised who I want to keep for now um, in that first team. But then I've also identified some targets. Just getting my shortlist. Some of these players, you may look at them and think, who are they? Why would you want to buy them for? Um, for the exception of a couple, I'd imagine um, Man Angel Manuel Cuela, if you remember him. Um, you wouldn't be questioning so much in Kieran Dyer, but some of these players, I mean, you look at Trevor Chalice for example. You look, he's only 22, and I know for a fact he gets better at this at this game. If you look at his key attributes for a left back, he'll make a perfect left back for us. And Manuel Cuela will be a good player on a cheap. We got 11.25 million to spend, which in real life now would be peanuts, but now that's quite a lot of money. Kieran Dyer, if we can get him to be right wing because we do need someone on the right and there's a fair bit of slim pickings there Sun Jihai would be a bit of a versat versatile player for us Mark Nicholas would be an up and coming centre back I know he becomes world class on the game George O'Callaghan is a very very good 18 year old Irish attacking central midfielder he'll play a part as a squad player and go into being a good player Jamie Shaw is a 20 year old defensive midfielder who does become fantastic on this game obviously from, from old memory they serve me well Luis Tevenent is a prolific goal scoring striker on the game so they're my initial targets I'm going for just now um, I'm still to set up things like training um, I'm still to set up things like my scouts and obviously to get coaches and things like that in so I'm going to go off and go and do that and I'll, I'll let you know as and when we sign players so I'll see you closer to the start of the season hopefully with a much more updated looking squad okay so we're now on the 1st of August um, we are only uh, let's have a look we're only f two weeks away from the start of the season so far we brought in Tevenant and Quayla. We managed to get both of them in O'Callaghan, Chalice, Mark Smith because we missed out on Mark Nicholas and Jamie Shaw, obviously you saw we were going for him. Mark Smith, only 18, already looking good as a centre-back. Trevor Chalice will go as a great left-back for us. O'Callaghan 
will make a great central midfielder. Quayla and Tevenant will obviously fill in the gaps up front. So we're having a pretty full squad. Southgate, everybody's after Southgate. I'm not letting him go. We need him. Him and Egiog are the best, one of the best partnerships on the game. Um, they were one of the best partnerships in the country back in their day. So I'm not willing to let them go. The only places that we're particularly light on right now is a winger for either side because Joe Wachimmer played on the right, Hendrick can play down the left. But as you'll see on here, Ian Anderson, 21 year old Scottish guy, pretty nippy. He'll serve as a decent sort of uh, backup winger for Joe Wachimmer because Joe Wachimmer is going to be our number one right winger. But Peter Lovenkranz will come in as our number one left winger, but look, only 18. So we're going to put together a particularly young team. So we can't be expecting any sort of instant results. Obviously, we can hope that we'll get a few wins under our belt early on. So you can see I've done the training. I like to set it up in attacking, attacking mid, defensive mid, defenders, goalkeepers. So we've done that. Coaches, I haven't done this yet. We're going to need some new coaches at some point. I'm not going to bother with it just yet, though. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm going to wait until we get to the, the first game of the season. I'm going to call it on this episode, episode two. This is the introduction episode, this is. The next episode, that's going to be when we're actually going to start seeing some game action. So, I'll take you to the point where the season's about to start. So a sign of the season coming in, the Charity Shield, as it was then, is now the Community Shield, but it, is, it was then the Charity Shield, Arsenal winning that 2-1, David Seaman, man of the match. So yeah, we're only a week away from the start of the season, and Ian Anderson has now joined us. So we're getting close now, the only outstanding target is Lovenkranz, let's hope we can sign him in time for the start of the new season. Okay then guys, it's on the day of our first game. We're not going to go through the game. Basically going to go through the squad and as you can see, we're looking at a 4-4-2. So I always say well, to, to build a Premier League squad, you need two for each different slot on the pitch. So for example, one, two goalkeepers, two right backs, two left backs, two left mids, two right mids, four centre mids, four centre backs, four centre forwards. So as you can see, two for the right back, two for the left back one two three four for centre back Dion Dublin is a striker I always have an extra striker because you always want to strike on the bench and if you get two strikers injured you can only get the one strike on obviously you've got a striker spare from the bench then but everything else is two of each so Taylor Draper Shaw and O'Callaghan and Merson so we've got five centre mids as well so we're spoiled, spoiled for choice on that at the moment um but then also we got Anderson Jochen for the right. Hendry, we haven't signed Lovenkranz. They want too much money. Um, we can't offer that money. We are in for someone else. We're looking at Chris Llewellyn. Um, I'm going to remove Lovenkranz from the shortlist. It's a shame because he is very good. But Chris Llewellyn is only 18. He's a quick up-and-comer. I know he does get good on this game. So it's worth getting him in. He's a winger who scores goals. You can see he's already played two um, appearances off the bench for Norwich and has got a 7.5, which is very good for this game. So, yeah, that's that's who we're going to go with for our left wing. Hopefully, with only 3.4 million left to spend, they're not going to want too much for him. But we do have an outstanding bid for him there. So, yeah, we've done all right in the, in the transfer market, basically. But... We have got some transfer listed players like Oaks, Enkelman and Rachel. All three of them keepers are on their way. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of players there that we don't need anymore um, who, are on the, who are on the transfer list. So hopefully, you know, someone will end up coming in for them and boosting our finances in time. But it looks as though we're going to have to start with only the one left winger to start this season with. So as you can see, we've already got Matt Bosnich for goalkeeper. He's already great on this game. One thing I know is his, his contract expires at the end of the season, so I am going to offer him a new longer-term contract, which hopefully he'll sign, and we won't have to worry about losing him. And then Matthew Ghent is only 17, as you can see. The key stats for goalkeeper, handling, reflexes, and agility, if you guys remember that. And he's only 17, and he's already up to 13s and a 14 so not bad for the backup keeper there 
So this great club of Aston Villa has hoped that we're going to go and do them some justice now this season. I think we've done well in the transfer market. we just got to follow it up. Dion Dublin there. Um, we just got to follow it up now and hope that we have a decent season. We're not expecting fireworks with the, the age of the team, but hopefully once they mould in together and they start improving as players, we'll start seeing more and more in the next two or three years. But then at the same time, play it right in the transfer market and we could end up with one or two gems on the cheap, which is really easy to do on this game. If you're looking in the right places and you're not lazy with your with your transfer market activity, so as you can see, some of the players that we got are decent. I, I'd have rather have had another centre midfielder. We lost eight on Dean Keats, who's a big player on this game, but he becomes one anyway. If we'd have had him, we would have put Taylor on the transfer list because we'd picked up Shaw and we'd picked up um, O'Callaghan. He's so I'm looking forward to seeing in the season. I got a feeling he's going to do well for us. As I feel, there's a few of them like Chalice will do well. I think. Um, Smith will come in when he's needed and he'll do well and I think Quayler and Tevenent are going to bang in some goals for us I think that's where we could do well this season is with our strikers we've got the the, the centre-back pairing in Southgate and Egiog. Um that's where we're going to do well in not letting as many goals in Then Watson has always proved to be a good player on this game I've always come up against Watson um, on this game and he's always done well against me so no reason why he can't do well for me but I tell you, honestly, right, some good memories from this game. This is casting my mind back really well at the moment. And, uh, no, it's really nice to uh, to relive some mem some childhood memories on this and to share them with you guys as well. So I hope this is a series that you guys will um, pick up on. It's a bit different to the usual football manager. You know, it's old school, you know, your old school type of uh, championship manager. And, you know, this for me was possibly the most enjoyable game of the Championship Manager 3 series. So, anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there. Um, next episode, we'll be looking at our first games of the season. We'll look, try and do three an episode. And hopefully, we'll sign Chris Llewellyn in that time. But until then, thanks very much for watching. And, as always, cheerio for now.